Hello, um, we're doing movable camera today because, uh, well, Leslie's behind it and she's gonna follow me because one of you nutsos, and that's just one in a long line of nutsos, said, can you please show your guitar collection? Well, apparently that's what I gotta do. So I've been asked over and over and over. And uh, if you're gonna ask why are you wearing brown, that is simply a total coincidence. But isn't it nice and matchy and grandpa -y? X, why are you standing there? Hmm? Come here. Come here. Why are you standing there? You wanna look at guitars? You wanna look at guitars? No. You wanna be with mommy, right? Wherever mommy, that's where you wanna be. Fine. So, we're gonna walk around and look at my guitars, and the guy asked, Can you tell us something about them? Like, okay, well. Um. Leslie, where do we start? There. There. Okay. This is my D'Angelico. I'm gonna. EXDC in C form green. I just, uh, the guys from D'Angelico showed up here. I took the pick out off because I didn't, didn't like it. Um, they showed up here and showed me some guitars and I never had a hollow body and I immediately jumped into the hollow body world with a very, very nice guitar and I just love the idea of the beautiful C form green. Um, headstock, of course, is D'Angelico. You have to like it and, well, it's so damn good. I just, don't care about the headstock because that's how good it is. Um, and this has not the stair step tail piece, it has the stop tail piece. It's a great guitar clocking in at about 1600. And I'm thinking if we make the rounds now, we're gonna end up at a Angelico on the other side. So we'll, we'll, we'll move on here. Um, here we have an Ibanez RG7, which they don't make anymore. This was one that was parked in the office at the German distributor at Meinl. And I said, um, hey, uh, I need some current seven string model to play in my videos so I can, you know, do some advertising for Ibanez because I like Ibanez. And um, the guy said, uh, well, what do you want? I'm like, well, I'd, I'd like to test some, some fan fret or what they have to call multi-scale because fan fret is, I think, trademarked by probably Dingwall. So uh, he's like, well, this one's a little bit scratched up. It's standing behind me. I've been noodling around on it. Would you be okay with that? I'm like, what do I care? I'm supposed to play it, you know? So uh, that's it. But they don't have this anymore. So we're going to replace this with uh, a new model very soon. A new model that is new -er than this one. So that, you know, I can show you something that you can actually buy and not something you can't get anymore. Pretty neat guitar. Clutch in about a thousand bucks. For the heavier stuff, totally cool. Now this is a Prestige. Can you see that it's purple, Leslie? Um, no, it's a purple sparkle. I, yeah. um, I got this, it's got a really nice uh, low pro edge tremolo, skunk stripe, bolt necks. It's a typical Ibanez Prestige 7 string. I was at Guitar Center in San Bernardino and this guitar teacher came in and said that a student like gifted him this, but he needed a Strat. So he was gonna sell this to Guitar Center and get a Strat. Now, Guitar Center pays shit. So Guitar Center offered him for this brand new prestige, <sighs> that needs to be dusted, uh, 12, uh, 500 bucks. And I said, well, if they're gonna give you 500 bucks, I give you 500 bucks. And the guy, the guy from Guitar Center is like, I have heard nothing, but we had to go out in the parking lot and do the deal because we couldn't do the deal inside Guitar Center. So we did that and I got this thing brand new for 500 bucks. And uh, it served me well on a whole bunch of progressive metal stuff. But it's pretty dusty because I've been playing this thing. Now here, I always wanted this. That is a JS-1000, the big one. This is the Joe Satriani guitar. If you ask me, one of the most ergonomic guitars on the market. It is so sleek, so slender, so sexy. And the guy is tiny. Um, I went to Satriani concert once and the roadie went like, okay, set up the whole thing, blah, testing the mic. And then the roadie went like this. Eek! And pulled the mic over here. Because this is about how big Satriani was. Well, not on my body, but on the roadie's body. This is a great instrument. 
at what they want for it, which is I think over 2,000 bucks, I'm not sure that it's a guitar with over 2,000 bucks, but if you want the Satriani sound, you get this immediately with this. Now this is obviously the Andy Timmons model. This is obviously the Steve Vai model. This is obviously a white gem. Now, me and gems, I've had the my second guitar that I got in 91 was a flower power pattern gem. And then my, and I traded that in for the multicolor universe, which by now would be worth 20,000 bucks or something. I don't know, a lot. And uh, that was a good trade. And then I traded this one in for one that's over there, which you're gonna see. And then I bought a whole bunch of gems. I actually bought a 1987 green one, limited to 777 with a Steve Vai autograph on the back. That one, is the one that now has been reissued. This is the classic neon green gem. It was studio clean. It has never been gigged. I traded that in in Boston because I studied sound design at Berkeley for a sampler, which is now worth about nine bucks. That guitar would probably be worth 20 easily. So, uh, bad choice. So I always wanted a gem again because I always made bad choices when it comes to gems. And I wrote a jingle for Wild West Guitars in Riverside in, uh, in California and I said, don't pay me for it. Let's do a trade. I want a gem brand spanking new from you guys and you get the jingle. So we did. Wrote a jingle for a guitar shop, got the guitar for it. Makes sense. And I'm never ever, ever, never ever giving this up not because it's the freaking greatest guitar in the world. I have guitars that are possibly like more than this. This is very clearly a Steve Vai kind of a thing. Very thick, uh, not super articulated. It's a, it's a gem, okay? It's a great guitar. But it's just there's a lot of memories and a lot of bad experiences with trading in gems. Which is why I'm keeping it forever. Um, here, this is a... A lot of old memories. This is a uh, brand spanking new. Just got this. You've seen it in a whole bunch of videos. Oh my god, this neck feels so fucking sexy. This is the uh, baby. Your, your neck is sexy. Okay, I'm just saying. This is. Don't don't. Okay. Uh, this is the Nick Johnston uh, signature Strat style guitar. See, I can say that. We talked. I can now say Strat style. Strat delicious. It's Stratesque. Has Strat roots. See, all this is totally cool. Just can't call it a Strat because it doesn't defend on it. Um, actually, I could call it a Strat. Okay, let's let's try this. It's a Strat type guitar. <laughs> um, it's it's brilliant. It's an amazing guitar. I love playing this. This is the one that I, right now I'm pulling off the wall when I want that type of guitar. Um, clock's in at about thirty three hundred bucks. Um, loads of videos with Nick here on my channel. Great guy. Great player, cool dude, drank loads of my coffee. Now this was my third guitar that I ever bought. Um, still doesn't have a scratch on it. Took really good care of it. This is a Strat Plus. Um, locking tuners, rolling saddle, new whatever, something bridge. That was all, that was 1993 when I bought this. And um, played this a shitload. You can see the fretboard. Um, it has Nordstrand pickups in it. At one point it had a Nordstrand um, prototypes in it for a long time. And then Carrie sent me this whole pickout with the Nordstrand pickups. And it never really sounded the way I wanted it. And then I went to Markus Quenzel, Quenzel Custom Guitars. And all he did is exchange the switch and the electronics. And it boosted the sound of this guitar tremendously. It made a huge difference. So just the electronics made it about 30% better. And um, it's a good guitar. It's not on the level of this or, or, or my other S-types. Um, still not a bad axe. LSL Sedicoy, boutique, unique, slightly aged. Um, clocks in at about 2,900. Very, very nice. S-type. Um, I don't play it in a lot of videos because uh, LSL has never really supported me. I bought two of their guitars, 
have gotten millions of hits on videos where I show them and uh, they simply don't understand how that works and how YouTube works. And I told them, hey, let's do more. And they say, oh yeah, you can buy another guitar from us. I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't advertise for you and then give you more money. That does, just doesn't make sense. So um, nice guitar, but you don't see it a lot because I don't like playing guitars from companies I don't have a great relationship with. Okay, it's not a bad instrument though, very nice. Now, very similar color, totally different corner of the world. This is a Maybach, Maybach Telemann, which for some reason that you can say, okay. Um, it is nicely aged. It's not super oldly aged, but it has the crackle. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see the broken paint here in the fretboard? Oh wow, look here, here you must be able to see that. Vintage style tuners, same thing in the, the fretboard isn't aged. This is made in the Czech Republic, but I think the company is technically German and Czech, something like this, distributed by a German company. Whatever the deal is, these things are amazing. They made a big whoop on the market here in Germany or Europe at least with their Les Paul type guitars, which are really cool clocking in, in at about two grand and they're really good. Um, now, this is a beautiful, open sounding, just very clean Tele style guitar. Okay. Um, very nice clocks in at around, I think, 16, 1700, which is sound wise, this is probably worth at least three grand. So it's, it, it, my buff are a great deal. Now, continuing with the T types. Whoa, this thing's a little bit, little bit heavier. This is a Fender, so this is a Telecaster. This is a road-worn uh, Mexico. For a road-worn 1300, 1250, it's a Mexico Tele, okay? I'm thinking it's a little bit overpriced for what it is. They try to make it look aged. The body is slightly aged, kind of, and you can see that the neck is, they try to make it look aged, fretboard, was sanded off, that's all that it is. It doesn't show any playing traces. Uh, hardware looks new, feels new. So yes, it's a cheap aged guitar or a relatively inexpensive uh, aged guitar. It's not horrible. I think for 900 bucks, I could totally support this. For 1250, I don't know. It's not a bad guitar though. I got this to be used in the Toman demos I do for the Toman, uh, pedal demos, I said I need a Strat and a Tele and I wanted to work with Fender, which is kind of where we got, you know, to a little bit, into a little bit of an argument and that lasted for a few years and uh, now we're best friends again. Well, we'll see, but we're friends. We talked about it, it's all good. Now, if you want this, what they were trying to do here, just in very, very nice and boutique for about almost three grand, we have my LSL because this is really what they were trying to do. Um, super aged, beat up, beautiful crackle in the paint. The pickup, can you see that? It's kind of like, has a little bit of rust on it. Like in the back, this is the, the neck beautifully just played in, or at least it feels like that. Beat up fretboard, piss yellow. When I opened the case for this thing, I almost puked because it's so fucking ugly. I mean, this is a piss guitar, but this is how you want your Tele-esque guitar to be. You want it, it was my first Tele style guitar, um, but it was the, f it, it, I wanted butterscotch, I think that's the, the color, black pickguard, I wanted that traditional look. And um, this is probably one of the guitars that I have that is the most raw, the most I'm playing wires on a piece of wood. That's what it feels like. It's honest, it's rough, it's raw, it's very rock and roll. This is a great axe, even though LSL doesn't like me. Still, great axe. And from left to right, we're gonna be here for a while, Lizzie, you know that, right? Um, this is an Ibanez Artcore. Got this before I left the States, because I didn't have any, oh, actually, it's, 
I like the Angelico was not my first hollow body. This was my first hollow body. Got this for $280 from Guitar Center before I left the States. I thought, hey, I've got friends there. Let's, let me make one more deal before I leave. And I got this very, very cool guitar. Totally worth 280 bucks. And you can get the Artcore series for up to like 500 or something. And they're absolutely worth the money. Really cool. Am I still playing this? Well, I've got the Dangelicos now, so no. Um, here, there's a broken string on it. This is uh, the Harley Benton Double Neck. Clocks in at $4.99, which is an amazing price for this. It is a great sounding guitar. There's a lot of wood, obviously. There's a lot of mahogany vibrating. Th super, I was going to say, super thick. Super sick. That also works. Sound. This is a great guitar for the money if you really want to kill your back. Um, why do I have this? Because Mr. Dent, my cat, peed in the case. And I called Troma and said, sorry, the case was open, Guitar pee, uh, the cat peed in it, I put the guitar in the pee overnight, I didn't notice, it has cat pee on it, uh, but you probably can't sell it anymore. And Troma said, yeah, shit happens, keep it. <laughs> and these guys are amazing. Now I have a double neck. Who can say that? It's definitely a very nice hincooker. We were in Deutsch sagen. It's a hinlooker. It's a look editor. It's a Leslie? Eye catcher. Eye catcher. Thank you. Um, here we have a very nice guitar that I rarely play because I'm fighting with the stupid 12s on it. Um, look at the humongous thing. That's what somebody said? No? Nobody says it ever? Okay, look at the huge headstock. It, I, that's a little bit overdone. The other ones are a little bit big. This is too much. So um, this is the EX175 clocks in at about uh, 1600, I think, 1599. This is a very cool rockabilly kind of Brian Setzer idea with a uh, real Bixby on it. Um, really thick, very cool sounding guitar. Uh, but because of the 12s, I try to bend. And it's tough, but it's got a really cool sound. Um, it's just the type of guitar that's not natural for me. So playing it is always a lot of adjusting. But if you're looking for a guitar in this style, check out Angelico. Or D'Angelico. <sighs> Up here? Mm -hmm. um, the light. So, Den Electro, these things clock in at about 430, 450 bucks. They are made from masonite. This is a, it's pretty much particle board. It's the stuff that's in the back of your closet. You know, the closet board stuff. These are cheap ass department store guitars with their absolutely unique sound. And uh, I, I really like this thing. It's unlike any other guitar and the, uh, uh, I use this for every reverb demo on the Toman website. If you go to any pedal that's a reverb, you hear this guitar. So every reverb is being played with the same guitar, same guy, you know, brilliant of course. Um, really cool open sound, that's why I like that. Leslie's uh, phone is going, we might have to stop now. <laughs> X, what's up? This is uh, Marvin. I got Marvin from Guitar Center in San Bernardino a while ago. Uh, he makes wah kind of sounds. It's like wow, wow, without a wah, which is a really, really cool thing. Um, he's wireless because whenever you try to actually plug something in, um, he doesn't like that. That's kind of like not his thing. So it's like a wireless kind of wah, wah. Yeah, right? Right, Marvin? Um, nah. I think you're lying. Nah. What do you mean? I'm lying. No, that's actually, that's, that's how that goes. Yeah. Ex leave him. Do you want to go outside? Go. Go, 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 go! Here's my SC550 Harley Benton thing. Oh, thing clocks in at 249 bucks. Um, this has upgraded electronics from Rubitzal tone abnehmer, Rubitzal pickups, and it has Rubitzal pickups. This is the one I used for the Rubitzal video. Um, absolutely highly recommended. I'm not saying that because I'm bored by Harley Benton. I will tell you that some Harley Bentons are not so great. This thing, everyone who picks it up, 
luthiers, everyone that's here, people from other brands, pick it up and they're like, yep, yeah, that's sadly a very good guitar, damn it. And it is, if you're in the market for an inexpensive LP, this is it. Where, where do you want to go? Are you an inexpensive LP? He wants to chase Marvin. No, chase Marvin. Okay, um, I'm gonna jump down here. Um, Harley Benton here for a video. Don't know if this is staying. This is a really good one though. This is fun. 179 bucks. Don't know the model. Something. Um, the, which I now learned, Prince type guitar. This is probably blending you. Here we go. We do this. Um, this is the one that supposed to be like the Höfner something. People told me um, supposed to be the guitar that Prince had, just in very very cheap. Uh, don't know if that's staying here. So um, this I had for a while. Sadly, PRS only had this for a short while, and they're very coveted. It was three ninety nine. Would have been three ninety nine. I got an artist deal on it. Um, SE. It's a junior, which now PS doesn't have anymore. One P90, this thing rocks, got a pretty chunky neck. It was an absolutely great guitar for the money. And uh, too bad that they're not making these anymore. Also white, quite a different price range. This is a Framus from the Pro Series, the German team build series. Um, it's an idol maker. <laughs> 5R, which means it's the one with the uh, three single calls. It's definitely Strat style, but absolutely not Strat body. It's actually set neck, so it's not Strat style. It does have the woods from a Strat type guitar. So this is maple and this is uh, ash. Uh, beautiful ratio tuners, locking ratio tuners from GraphTech. This is an absolutely great guitar, about 2400 bucks. Um, really fun to play. And I'm not into these types of bodies. On this guitar, I absolutely love it. And the ones with two humbuckers, mahogany and maple, are really beautiful and are extremely great mahogany type guitars. Here's something very special, the Thelma 42 that Werner Wende from Natsangi built for me. Um, P90 in the back, single call. Clearly a T-type guitar, but everything about it is very big. The body is bigger. I love the shaping here. It's absolutely unique. All the uh, woods are German wood, so there's no exotic stuff going on. Um, when you're picking this thing up, you notice that there's half a tree in your hand. It's a very wide and very thick neck, um, like all of his guitars. That's just his style. And that's, you know, Thelma 42 says it in the back here. I don't know how many piece neck, many, many piece neck and, and uh, a glued in set neck, not a bolt on. Look at this cool wood board here. It's a very unique guitar. Sounds beautiful. Clocks in all hand built at about 2000 bucks. Now here's my M3 from Quenzel, which uh, is still missing a string because it uh, broke. Um, this is also a masterpiece of a guitar. Markus built this for me and it was a guitar that was used for the uh, Musikmesse three or two or three years ago. Um, three years ago. Wait, why am I pulling this up? Ah, because... Ah! Stupid, because it's push push. So we have push push because I like that on my guitars. For single call sounds, these are actually PRS uh, heads that I wanted because I like them. Um, beautiful flame maple fretboard. Flame maple pickup rings. We, we try to have this very bright offset in terms of colors and look at this neck. Isn't this just to die for? This was definitely a maple mahogany. This is Swetenia mahogany one piece. Um, this is definitely a, a, a big concept. It's very thick. You would think that the sound is extremely thick. Well, it's not. This is great for cleans and it's a very bright and wiry sounding guitar. Uh, wood clock in this is a unique one-time build at about 5800 um, Well, what, what can we say about this that has not been said? Um, 
It's Mopel. I mean, uh, Kiana and I, we did the color, did it in red, sanded it off, did it in blue, sanded the stuff in between so the blue comes out. Um, Sebastian from Warwick and I and, and Kiana, we spent quite a while together to, to come up with this. It's sadly in a lot of shots, it looks very dark. Let's see, how does it look here? Purple. Okay, because it has, in the, in the right light conditions, this guitar is insane. With beautiful blues in between, can you see that? Mm. Probably not, huh? The, 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 the light. I, lo I love the uh, ebony fretboard, which has different colors in it. I really wanted that. We have a flame maple binding, which I wanted. I didn't want any inlays. Um, Seema Duncan pickups, push-pull push for single coil sounds. We have a black limbar back and neck. Um, these look like wood, and they are, but underneath the wood, which is amazing, is actually thin aluminum so that they don't bend. So that's really cool. And the other thing for frames, which is unique, or you, not unique, but very high end, is these rounded off uh, frets. That's rounded off by hand. So everything about this guitar uh, is screaming custom shop, high end. This is definitely something that you would expect from PRS, for example, in the uh, private stock area where this would easily clock in at over 10,000 bucks. From Framus, about 6,800. This is an expensive piece of gear. Did I pay that much? No. I'm friends with them. I did pay quite a bit of money, but they gave me a deal so that, of course, I can show it to you because I can't spend that much money on a guitar. Come the fuck on. But um, they were nice enough to give me a deal that I could justify to Leslie. Um, and then there was a little bit of like, really? And then... Of course, I didn't give her the actual number I paid. I'm not an idiot. I mean, hey, babe. Um, here's something equally amazing, but very different. The Hartung, Frank Hartung is an amazing German guitar builder, super highly respected. Hartung Embrace Vantage 57. If you look at his website, the woods he uses and the grains, it's they're the most amazing guitars out there. This is go top aged, scraped off um, to, to be made like a 57 Les Paul, just with his very unique shaping on it, the 3D shaping. Um, I've had this for over two years. It's parked here from Frank. It's not mine. Um, and I just recently found out that it has call split. Um, I just assumed it didn't. I don't know why, but I just found out. Um, this is probably the best Les Paul type guitar that I've ever played and definitely the best Les Paul type guitar that I have here. It's absolutely amazing. Frank is working on one for me that I told him I want exactly this just with a beautiful top because I'm not the biggest gold top guy. On the other hand, I really am getting used to this and um, it's going to be very, very tough to get not get rid of this, but um, to let go of this. So this is an amazing instrument. So hoping that what he's building is um, just as good, which I think it is. We are now in the Berumen corner. Now Isaac Berumen is a fan of my channel, which is awesome. And I said, hey Isaac, let me show you guitars. So we made a deal and I said, I want to show what is very unique to you. And I'm going to buy this from you. Gave me a great deal. And what's very unique to him is using copper for tops. Called a copper top. So this is what it is. So Isaac, I think for a year and a half, worked on these guitars. It was a long process. Of course, he needed to, you know, build guitars for clients that actually paid him, you know, full price, which is fully understandable. So um, he built an absolute insane guitar here. With Oh, by the way, the uh, Quenzel has Four Seasons pickups in it from my friend Bob Gabriel in, I think, Holland. So uh, Bob also built the pickups for the Barumi guitar. So these are Four Seasons pickups. Individually tappable with ta uh, uh, push push. And this is a black limbar body. So uh, uh, same as on the um, framers. 
with custom cut aluminum cavity covers and this absolutely mind-blowing copper flat copper top with a black binding with a little uh, silver ring there Isaac did the, uh, the switch tip himself I know that um, he brushed this down uh, I think Bob did this copper ring copper rings with black abalone inlays and an absolutely mind-blowing flame maple stained flame maple fretboard uh, matching headstock with the font we're gonna have to work on that Isaac because that's the Harley Benton font I think that's brush script the standard Leslie is that brush script why would I know you don't know fonts no. what's wrong with you um, he brushed these down these are again um, a graph tech uh, ratio tuners we had a little bit of a misunderstanding because I think I said I might not have said that I want them locking and then non-locking but um hey who cares so and then now look at this headstock and and I mean that is absolute guitar porn right there let's look I, I, are you getting like a lady woody no is this doing anything for you no no okay good Pretty damn cool guitar. And it's chambered. So it sounds very open. It resonates. Beautiful axe. Isaac would want about $3,000 for this, which is absolutely not enough. If you buy a guitar for him for 3,000 bucks, I'm gonna kick your ass. You need to give him more money because these are worth way more. Now I told him, I love the woods that you're using. And I, he just keeps posting these beautiful guitars that he made you know, with wood tops. And I said, I'm gonna buy another one from you. Cause just having the copper one doesn't show what you can do. So he built me in parallel Quilty, which is a traditional Les Paul type guitar, mahogany body, mahogany neck, um, again, ratio tuners. Uh, there's a heel cap out of um, Ziricote which is actually what the fretboard wood is. This is the Ricote with a beautiful grain in it. Um, we have a flame maple binding. He made these flame maple pickup rings, again, Four Seasons pickups. Individual tap tap for cold split. And then he went and made these inlays because he didn't think the knobs were fancy enough. I think they're fancy enough. We have a beautiful switch tip here. Natural binding. These guitars come in gator cases. And again, for absolutely not enough money. Isaac is crazy to sell them as cheap as he does. Really a master built instrument. Also his, oh, also his uh, frets. They are hand, uh, rounded off which is a lot of work and you only see on the best guitars out there not even prs private stock guitars have that treatment i know very few companies that do that i know framus does it i know he does it i know Ru ruo kangas or something from finland which are very expensive do this um this is definitely a very special treatment Whoa. Sandberg Ken Taylor basic bass, 1250 bucks, absolute workhorse, single coil, humbucker, whatever you want, active, passive. Um, Sandberg, this is an amazing bass if you want almost any style. This has served me really, really well for quite a while. Great bass from German company Sandberg. <sighs> I haven't played this in a while. Oh, and it's heavy, it kills you. This is a Music Man copy from the uh, company Fame. It's built, I think, in Poland. Uh, clocks in it, or did clock in back then for, uh, in, for about 500 bucks or 550 as a five string. Uh, very, very good bass. It's just heavy as shit from the company Fame. That's the in-house brand for a music store in Cologne. Um, again, did serve me quite well. Haven't played it in a long time because the Sandberg kicks ass. Custom built Magnus five string. This is a Sharky. Um, Magnus doesn't make very fancy basses, but he knows wood and he knows how to build. 
So this is a um, uh, bird's eye maple fretboard, bird's eye maple neck. Look at this bird's eye maple. Come the fuck on. It's a bolt on, wooden cover, recessed. Uh, plug thingy there. Uh, this is an uh, this is German master build handmade base. Um, I don't even know how much he wants for that. Very very cool and it's passive. From the same series, I have a six string fretless. Now why I got this? Because the bass player in my old prog metal band in Chain. God, I love this thing. He um, was a roofer before he studied physics. I'm not shitting you. Christian was a roofer, then studied physics. Because he was a roofer, he could roof Magnus's shop, his workshop. It needed, it's an old barn, so it needed roofing. So Christian did it as a trade for this base. Now, years later, this base just ended up in his basement. Get it? His basement? Leslie? Nope. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, it's fucking funny. Um, what's with the dog? I think we broke him. Anyway, um, so, and I needed for an album for uh, the Roswell 6 album for A Line in the Sand. The album's called A Line in the Sand by Roswell 6. For the ballads, I wanted uh, fretless stuff. And I asked Christian if I could uh, borrow it. And I did, and I had so much fun with it, and I got such a cool, thick, kind of creamy sound with it that uh, I asked him how much he wants for it. So I bought this bass for 550 euro. This is a complete handmade master instrument. Um, and I will never let it go. I'll never let you go. You are always on my mind. Please comment what song that is. Well, why are you shaking your head, baby? You're the only one for me. You're all I need. I'll never, never let you go. Such a good song. You know that song? Please comment. And track number on the album, because I know. I should listen to that album. Next time we go somewhere, baby, we listen to that album. Yes. Um, here, dirt cheap, 150 bucks or something bass from Harley Benton, fretless. Um, <laughs> I mean, ridiculous how cheap this is. Ridiculous how much bass you're getting for the money. Really nice sunburst there. And come on. I mean, I did a review for this and I said, I'm not, I'm not sending this back. I don't get paid for Harley Benton reviews, so... Uh, I send most of the stuff back, but then they're like, well, you want to keep something? I'm like, yeah, I want to keep that piece. <laughs> Moving on. Well, here's another Harley Benton SC550. The reason why I have this is because we put different pickups in the other one, and I didn't want... I wanted a Harley Benton that was stuck, so that when I'm doing stuff, I'm saying this is what the Harley Benton sounds like, which the other one now, of course, has been modified. I'm an idiot. Uh, so they were nice enough to send me a new one. So that I actually have a reference SC550. Great guitar, and I got it in a different color. Um, these are here for review. The Harley Benton, don't ask me, DG, the Harley Benton HM. Leslie calls this probably the ugliest guitar she's ever seen, is that correct? I don't know. I think there's ugly guitars, but again, let me get the lights on that. Okay, moving on. SC45 SE, uh, no, SE245, that's what it's called. Um, that's a Gibson scale. Um, <sighs> crap, so dirty, haven't played it in a while. Gibson Scale SE, a great guitar. You can't get it anymore now. They have a new line, blah, blah, blah. But I think I think that SE 245 is still uh, there. I have, of course, I, I replaced the pickup rings myself. They're mine. You can buy these for like 25 bucks. I love the wooden pickup rings. Um, it's a really, oh, and wooden switch tip. It's a really decent guitar for about 
six, seven hundred, seven hundred bucks, something like this. Um, definitely rivals uh, any guitar in that price range. Comes with a nice gig bag. How much do I play it? Well, with what I have, not so much anymore. Um, but great axe. So this, of course, is prototype four of my signature Harley Benton. You've all seen it. Um, with the P90 and the stupid colors that are my logo colors and the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy logo, matching headstock. What's it? I, know, I always forget what the wood is. It's not rosewood, it's that other thing. Oh, purple heart fretboard, purple heart neck. And of course, now Congo's paw in the back, which we knew that she wouldn't have a lot longer when, when we said we want that. And I'm very happy we did that because Congo's gone now, but she will be remembered with a paw on all these guitars. Um, really cool. And when will they come out? Shut up about it. I don't know. We're working on that. We're trying to get them to you as fast as possible. I am a big Steve Morse fan. I always wanted a Steve Morse. I wanted the blue one. Now, I had a little bit of money a couple of years back and looked on eBay and I found the Y2D, the updated newer version, uh, not with the four pickups, but with the three. And I found this brand new with the original strings on it. I mean, the guy bought it or maybe he got it as a gift. It had never been really played. I got it off eBay for 1500 bucks. And I was very happy because this guitar is worth a thousand bucks more than that. Um, got it in the, in the original case. It's got a um, bird's eye maple neck, which is non-painted, but then it's painted here. Uh, locking tuners. It's an absolutely gorgeous guitar, but I got it in purple sunset because he plays in deep purple. So this was a special color they did for that run that very few people wanted. Maybe that's why it was cheaper, but I don't care. I like purple and um, it's an amazing guitar. It's not a metal axe. It's a rock and roll guitar. It's a beautiful play solo lead lines guitar. It's a great, 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 great guitar. I highly recommend trying one. Ow, oh, so, oh. Okay, moving on to my baby. Been trying to tell PRS to work with me, you know, let me show you newer PRS guitars and, and just, you know, include me a little bit more in the advertising and media they do and apparently they're not interested. I've shown, I've played so many PRS guitars in my videos and I've really tried to push the brand. Uh, I added up the clicks and we're like at three and a half million clicks with videos with PRS guitars, whatever, but they, um, they don't quite know how YouTube works and how to work with YouTubers. And I said, un un unless we find some way to work together, I really don't want to advertise more for free. I'm doing this now. I'm going to show you my PS guitars, but you're not going to see a lot of them in my videos because I, I refuse to just, you know, do stuff for a company that doesn't value what I do. Let's, let's put it that way. Okay. The guitars, brilliant. No doubt that the guitars are brilliant. This, is an absolute masterpiece. Back in the day, this clocked in at six grand. It might even be worth more now. That's in a modern Eagle II in faded blue jean. Um, uh, Rob Chapman once said that this is the guitar he really wants. He wanted a modern Eagle II in faded blue jean. I have one. Na, 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 na. Rob, come over here. You can play it anytime. You even get the coffee for free. Um, call split, which is really stupid because these things are kind of slippery. You kind of have to go underneath with your nails sometimes. Why do they not make push push pots? The damn thing is worth as much as a freaking small car. 6,000 bucks. Why can't you put in a pot that I push? It's fucking ridiculous. I get these when I ask for it, but no company puts in push push. Um, Indian rosewood. Indian rosewood neck. Pretty chunky, thick ass neck. One piece, beautiful light mahogany, an amazing color on it. Beautiful wave in there. Um, it is, it has uh, two kinds of monstery cool abalone, mother of pearly, I don't know, whatever. Uh, bird inlays, got the big eagle there. It doesn't even say PRS on it. Those PRS funky locking tuners. 
This, I think, I know, did I, did I do that myself? I might have. I don't know if I did that. If that was for me or not. I mean, yeah, I definitely did the, um, the wooden pickup rings because they came with plastic. What the fuck? This guitar sounds raw, rough, super defined. I did a lot of metal with this. I did some really heavy shit with that because it's got this pow pow sound and um, it's, it's got dirt. You would think from a guitar like this, it's like refined and oh, no, 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 no. This is a monster. Great axe. Love it. Oh, did, did I pay 6,000 bucks for it? No, I never paid anything even remotely for any of these guitars like this. Um, I got an artist deal. I did an album uh, with quite some big people on it and I said, hey, P.I.S., I always wanted P.I.S., let's talk. And so I was treated as an artist and I got a pretty fair deal on it, okay? Um, this is on loan here from P.I.S. for the Tormann videos. This is the guitar that you hear as the Les Paul type guitar. Uh, the mahogany single cut in all the Toman videos and also all the delays are played with this. If you look at the Toman uh, uh, video on there on the uh, product pages and it's a delay, you hear this. Of course, all the high gain, a lot of the high gain stuff, a lot of the rock stuff is played with this. Uh, it's an SC245. It's pretty much the US version of the one over there. Um, and this actually was uh, used for quite a while by Marty Friedman. So, uh, Marty actually put that ding in there. I did not do that. PRS knows that, I hope, that I didn't do that. Um, even in the back, it's all sunbursted, open tuners, which is kind of cool. It's a great, and it, it looks beautiful. It's a beautiful, very bright sunburst. Um, it's an absolutely dreamy guitar uh, that can kick a lot of a lot of Gibson's asses. Um, can it kick the Hartung's ass? We've tried this. Two guys in the room handing it back and forth and back and forth. No, it cannot. It's a very, very good guitar. The Hartung kicks its ass a little bit. And this is a factory guitar, probably over 4,000 bucks easily. Hartung is about 55, but that's not the point. That's one guy doing it with a lot of love. That's a whole bunch of guys doing it with a lot of love, but it's, th there's a difference, okay? Definitely an amazing instrument. In that artist deal with PRS, I also got this. I told them, give me orange, because I had a really cool orange, or whale blue, or whatever you've got lying around. I gave him two or three color options. Well, this came, and it's really pretty. Just, it always looks freaking black, because it's so dark. Can you see that? This is blue, Leslie? Mm -hmm. Well, let's, let's look at it in the light a little bit more. Because it's got a really pretty top, just way too dark. It's got the shadow birds. The empty birds, which I really like. That's kind of nice. Um, black in the back, kind of sad. You see a lot of handprints on it. Oh, with me. Um, and for some reason, this has a cold split, but only for the back pickup. So, there's a cold split, but only for this one. Um, again, the pickup rings I put on, and this beautiful mother of pearl... Uh, switch tip I also put on myself as well as the wooden truss rod cover that's my thing I just on a, on a guitar in this price range I don't like plasticky things I like the wooden stuff this is of course an SC250 which means it's got a 250 inch 25 inch that's what it is 250 inch that would be like my penis um, uh, 25 inch scale and that's kind of the guitar that Nickelback used for quite a while. That, uh, that's the Chad Kroger guitar. Yeah, whatever you say about Nickelback, they have a freaking fat sound, okay? This one, Drop D, it's aggressive, it's fat, it's a massive rock and metal axe. It really is. This is the thing I, I, this is the thing I use when I want to go wall of sound, I kill you now. That's the one.
Now, PIS had a video where they showed the Swamp Ash special with narrow fields, and I must have watched that video about a million times. I really wanted this guitar, and then I met Paul Reed Smith four or five years ago in Frankfurt, and um, I asked, uh, you still have some of these? Because apparently they were fading them out, and uh, phasing them out, and in England they still had some, and I talked to Gavin, uh, the guy in England, and uh, he gave me a little bit off, not a lot, but a little bit off, and I had no money at the point. So I sold keyboards and, oh my god, and some pedals, and I sold whatever I could, a whole bunch of stuff. I sold uh, uh, your tires, Leslie, by the way. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I sold your tires and hubcaps and whatever I could find. <laughs> um, but some bad eBay deals where then I got people being mad because they didn't get the right stuff. It was a couple of weeks of pain through eBay, but I could afford this guitar. And I love it. It's, you know, five position pickup switch, which is, of course, my switch tip that I bought. Um, really cool kind of dark inlays in the birds in this beautiful fretboard. Um, I, of course, also did this truss rod cover. Because why plastic? Come on, the guitar used to be about 25, 2600 bucks. So um, this is a bolt-on. Thick, thick vibrato block, as you can see right there. A uh, great... Just, just a fun guitar that's hard to pinpoint. It's, it can sound rather fat, but it can give you these stratty sounds in between. Um, it's just its own thing. If you get your hands on one, Swamp Ash Special, Swamp Ash Body, obviously, or Maple, it's stratesque, but without being that. And here we have the SS, says the German. Ha! And here we have the SS from D'Angelico. Why are you shaking your head, baby? Um, this is uh, different than the DC because it's the SS. But first of all, we have the stair step tailpiece. And for someone with a lisp, that's mean, the stair step tailpiece. Um, I left the pickguard on here because I think it's nice. Beautiful flame, but look in the back, even more flame. It's flame malicious. I just love how everything on this guitar is very bright and I picked it specifically with the black hardware because that makes it badass. Um, and this is completely empty. The DC has a big block in the middle, which is why it's heavier and you know it's a big sustain block. This is a complete hollow body. It only has a piece of wood under here and that's it. So it's a lot lighter and a lot more open sounding. Just an amazing guitar. If you're in the market for hollow bodies, check out these D'Angelicos. I absolutely love playing these. It's got tone for days. It's round. Put a little bit of compression from the Bogner Lindhurst on there. Really killer. killer. Um, and you have a guitar that just won't quit. So that's it for the few guitars in this room. Let's see, you can follow me. We're gonna just go and rush through some others that are standing around because I simply don't have more space in here. I tried, I tried, I tried. There isn't any more space for a single guitar. I thought about it. I don't know where to put them. That's all I can do. I need the TVs there. That's, uh, that's what I need when we do the videos to see what we're doing. So follow me. Oh. Sorry for the light being sucky in here. Can you see something? Hmm. Okay. Um, another D'Angelico that's an acoustic guitar. That's a Mercer of the Gramercy. I'm gonna say, no, I don't know, one of the two. One of them has rosewood and the other one has mahogany. Um, really cool acoustic guitar. Fishman Inc. Uh, preamp. There's a video on my channel. Um, it has uh, brass, picker, uh, brass, Pins comes in a case, so uh, that's in here. My acoustic guitars are in here because I don't know where else to put. Here's an old PV bass that I played while I was at Berkeley. You know, I, I played all my own bass parts and my recordings and my homework and whatever, whatever I needed to record as an arranger. I had to know what the bass does, and that was the thing that. Uh, Served me well for quite a while. I did jingles with that in California. S uh, bought it at 
Sam Ash across the street from Berkeley. I like in my first week there. Um, super, super cheap ass base, but did a good job. And I still have it. There was a base right there. Where did that go? Um, is that upstairs? It might be upstairs. Okay, here we have... Oh, by the way, uh, this looks like total ass. Because this is the room where I put boxes for stuff that, you know, needs to go back out. And camera stuff that I don't know where else to put. So, uh, excuse the mess. This is Leslie's uh, workspace here, by the way. This is where the switch bitch sits. Where the switch bitch sits. Um, and uh, we'll show you the video setup in another video. Got some more amps here and way more amps over there. Um, so, here's another Ibanez. It had to make way for the Nick Johnson on the Ibanez wall. That's supposed to be orange, but it was so damn ugly because that's a Frank Gambali um, signature from about 92. And that's, uh, I traded my multicolor universe for this. Yeah, bad choice, Henning, bad choice, I know. Um, with a weird orange, it's a mahogany guitar. It sounds amazing, it's a great lead guitar, it's a great shredder guitar, it's a great fusion guitar. But I did the whole blue thing with a marker. We, we could get that off if we had to. Someone wanted to buy it recently. Um, it is a Frank Gambardi from 92, it's probably worth quite a bit. Uh, just, it never really, I never liked it. I never liked the color. I did use it on quite a few albums, uh, especially for the lead work. Um, Harley Benton 8-string. The review is not out yet, but it should be out any day now. Uh, and I kept that because then I have an 8-string. It's about 150 bucks, come on. Um, Harley Benton HB35 Plus clocks in at what, 229 or 219 or something? Ridiculously cheap and a really cool hollow body with call split. It's actually a really, really good guitar. That's why I kept it, to have an inexpensive hollow body around. Um, Harley Benton DC Custom. Absolutely beautiful, white and gold. Under 200 bucks. And it's fat as hell. Has even Grover brand tuners. Um, there's nothing wrong with this guitar. Didn't have a scratch on it. And, and I wanted something SG style. Style, not SG. SG style. Uh, because I didn't have anything like this. So I told them I would like to keep it. Um, Harley Benton S-Type kit. 69 bucks. We're gonna get to the kits at some point. It's been over a year now that I started this let me show you the kits project. Uh, I just haven't gotten around to building the other ones. They're standing in the corner. But uh, 69 bucks and it sounds pretty cool. I had Nico Schliemann play this and he's like, dude, 69 bucks? Yeah. Um, while we're at it, Harley Benton ST62, 120 bucks now or something like this ridiculously cheap you would expect to get nothing for it and you get a fully functional s-type that actually doesn't sound horrible in any way i have a comparison video of this with my other uh, s-types if you want to know how it sounds not a fair video though um okay takamini takamini gs 330s Bought this for $280 in the US. Uh, no pickup, no cutaway, no nothing. Played this on many, 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 many albums and people have always asked me, how do you get your great acoustic sound? It was an inexpensive Octava mic right here and this guitar probably doesn't. Wow, amazing. Um, for strumming, this is amazing. For detailed work, you work too hard. This guitar is not made for this. But for open chords and, and normal strumming, this is a killer instrument for really not a lot of money at all. Now, I wanted an acoustic guitar that can do the detailed work. And then I bought this Guild used for 500 bucks. I think new, it's probably around a thousand. Everyone who... It's all not really in tune here. Um, so everyone who's at the studio and who played this on sessions, they were like, if you ever want to get rid of your guild, let us know. 
Again, no pickup, no cutaway, this is just a dreadnought. It's a very, very cool instrument, grower tuners. Um, people love this instrument and I don't think I'm gonna let it go. Not that I'm gonna use it anytime soon, but it's mine. You can have it! Um... Follow me! There are no strings on here. No strings attached! <laughs> um, this is a nylon string, or not, that I got from a guy, uh, I don't know what I gave, from Doug, Doug Quiros. Uh, I produced some progressive rock stuff for him and I said I don't have a nylon string. He pulls it, I think, out of his trunk and said, here, you can have it. He got this for 28 bucks out of the recycler, which is like a used newspaper in California. Um, I used this on the Frameshift albums, I used this on a shitload of stuff, on the Chain albums. Anytime you hear nylon string, oh, this plays really, plays like butter. Um, again, decent mic in front of it, and it sounded great. 28 bucks. I have some nice Ortegas now, also ukuleles. My Ortega uh, Stripe Suite is right now on the road with Raphael, it's not here. Um, Doug, the same guy, also pulled this out of the trunk because I gave him a pod. I gave him the bean pod, the pod two. And he's like, hey, you want a seven string? And he hands me this Dean that he <laughs> painted himself. Um, I don't think I've ever changed the strings on this, but he pulls it out of the trunk and gives it to me as a trade. So, hey. It's right here. Um, Fender mandolin. Use that on quite a few recordings because I like to do some acoustic stuff. And um, hey, wanna wanna come to the corner with me, Listen. Don't don't fall over the Keeley stuff. Don't fall over my laptop. Don't die. Um, there's my pedal board room. Um, okay, this, this we go last. We have, oh! We have a body here that's still being worked on. Oh. This is a killer, which one is this? This is uh, the black one, okay. Uh, killer, killer guitar. This I got at Guitar Center from a rabbi. The guy came in, wanted to buy, I don't know what he wanted to buy, I think a Fender or something, and I turned him onto a road core, an, an art core from Ibanez, because he wanted to do Beatlesy kind of stuff, and he loved that I uh, got him a guitar that was better suited for what he wanted, and I was just there as a customer. And I had played this before on an amp, it was used, $250. And he was like, oh, you really sounded good with this guitar and you really helped me out. Let me buy it for you. <laughs> so the rabbi, I'm like, are you, are, you, are you shitting me? And he's like, no, no, you did a nice thing. You helped me out. I want to help you out. I want to do something nice for you. I'm like, are you serious? He's like, yeah. So the rabbi bought me this guitar. And I've used this so much. It is such an amazing guitar. HSS, it's, everything about it is great. It can really metal back here. It can really strati very easy. Um, it's a cheap guitar. I think it knew they were like 400 bucks or something. Um, I put some better tuners on it, which, which are... Oh, damn it, they're shallows. Why did I say better tuners? I don't... Well, I don't like the company. And actually, actually I don't like the tuners. They suck. Um, but I upgraded a little bit. Oh, and this one actually where it had the very first Nord Strand pickups on it uh, that Kerry ever made for guitar and it was at Nam as the demo guitar for his pickups. So these are Nord Strands. Um, but I love that thing so much that when I came back to Germany, I hunted down a second one. So here's the one with stock pickups and stock tuners. Um, and it sounds pretty much as good as the other one. 
So I got two of these. If you ever can get your hands on a PV Limited, it looks like this, amazing. Um, you, you might have seen this thing. That's another build kit from Harley Benton, which in this shape they don't make anymore because that's illegal. But I scraped this kind of like on the street, colored in three different colors. Um, really, really nice. Well, nice. I mean, it's 69 bucks and it works. Okay, you can play it. Uh, don't don't fiddle with these because they don't do anything. It's either on or off. But for 69 bucks, it's a workable guitar. Um, same as this. Same thing. You can't get this anymore because it's the original shape. That's not allowed. Um, also a build kit, which uh, would have to be really worked on because it looks like the neck. Ah, oh, sounds beautiful. But hey, 69 bucks. We did the own paint. We can't even show this officially because they don't make this shape anymore. Now this is interesting. Oh, I think she needs some new strings. We should give her some new strings. This is my first guitar. January 6, 1990. I went to Limburg to Sandner, which is a store. Sandner is the store in the town of Limburg with my mommy and we bought this guitar for 199 marks back then and that's when I started to play guitar with an E minor chord that looks like so and then at some point I spray painted this because I was a kid um, it has a peace sign on the back yeah I don't don't judge me um, this is my first guitar this is how it all started and now I have three or four more. Um, I guess we go upstairs and then we're done. There's a Harley Benton in my guest bathroom because I don't know where to put them. And it's pretty. Come on. More Bulldog stands, mind-blowing Harley Benton 12 string. This thing is 200 and something, 220 or something. And it's a 12 string with a Fishman uh, preamp. This is even preamped. Um, okay, uh, it's a fully usable 12 string. Um, Niels Hoffmann from Mandowar got himself one. He's traveling with this and playing it. Don't know if it's in tune. <laughs> Of course, tuning it would take a while because it's 12 strings, which is twice as many as usual. Um, this is an amazing instrument I, and I wouldn't let it go. After the review, I was like, oh, fuck you guys, you're not getting that one back. This is, of course, Sir Didymus. Because we all need a knight. Get it? It's one night and he's standing. You know what he is? He's a one night stand. Hmm. 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 Um, here, Stanford uh, OM28, small uh, guitar, so much fun. I mean, look, what, look the review. Watch the review of the OM28 from Stanford. This thing is so sweet. Just an amazing instrument for about 650 bucks. I have no idea what this is, where it came from, and why it's here. I can't remember. Someone gave this to me. I don't know who. <laughs> this might be the brand. Good Klang. In English that would be good sound. So this is the amazing good sound guitar. 
Okay, sounds good. Might need some strings. Okay, and the last pile of guitars. Copy of the Höfner Beetle Bass from Harley Benton. Extremely inexpensive and it does a great job. Um, and it looks the part including sunburst on the back. So if you're looking for Beetle Bass, absolutely, absolutely recommended. And under 200 or something like that. This is apparently a very good company. Oh, guys, heavy. Uh, for banjos, this is a Ventura banjo that I've played on quite a few metal albums because every metal album needs at least one or two songs with banjo in it. If, if you think I'm kidding, please buy my albums and listen. I have a very sad ballad about rape that Sebastian Bach sang, which is played with banjo. And that is true. Um, played on this Ventura banjo that I got from Adam Evers as a gift when I left the States. Adam, thank you. It will never leave my hands. Another thing that I got before I left the States, Fender Resonator guitar, inexpensive, 200 something bucks. Um, I love using that on albums when I'm doing like an acoustic part and I want like a second part that just frequency-wise stands out from the acoustic guitar. So it's not this whole mash of acoustics. Um, and then I'm using the Resonator. Beautiful guitar for little money. Oh, here's the bass that I was looking for. This is probably an inexpensive Ibanez SGR or whatever. Um, it was black and it was left behind by an asshole that I had as a roommate for a bit. The guy didn't pay his rent. The guy was smoking weed and I don't know, running around naked, I don't know. He did a lot of shit that pissed us off and one day he was gone. But he left his bass, he was at Berkeley, he was a bass player for a while. And it was black and beat up. And I thought, hey, I restore it. I spent days sanding it by hand. Oh my God, did I underestimate how much work that would be. N now touching this, I did a good job. Leslie touched this. Huh? Huh? Smooth. And um, you can see he had burned stuff in the back and it, here he had burned shit in it. Totally beat this thing up. We can see it's a three-piece body, so it's probably some cheap Ibanez base. But I put a lot of work into it. Uh, put a new bridge on it with a big screw that's probably very wrong. Um, and this is actually, the Trust Lord cover is from a Folgers coffee can. Best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup and jingles work. Yes, I wrote jingles for about six years. That was my job. Not that one. I wrote used car jingles, okay, and mattress store jingles and stuff like this. Um, it never worked. The electronics never worked. So I put all this work in and I could never use it. But um, I still have it. The only thing that I can say about this is that it's absolutely beautiful, isn't it? And not gay in any way. Let's see how pretty is this. Doesn't everyone have to have like a pink purple guitar with a dragon hovering over a castle? This was a spin-off brand of Ibanez back in the 90s called Starfield. And this was a very inexpensive S-type, actually the first S-type I ever had. It was strat stratty kind of, but it was red and I bought it for, I don't know, 300 marks or something. It was a beginner guitar. Um, and I took it to a guy <laughs> to get airbrushed and I actually told him that this is what I want. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> it's so sad. Look, even the back, he even did, I mean, look at even this, there's a lot of work in this thing. Uh, and then I bought the pickups to match. I don't know why, but it will always be here as a memory of other times. And this I bought uh, probably 10 years ago because I wanted a telly. 
Got it cheap, uh, came from England. It's definitely the higher grade um, Yamaha Pacifica. The thing is, it ha it looks like a tally. It's got the pickups like a tally. Um, even has a decent back, one, two, three piece body, string through body. It's, it's Tally-esque. Thing is, it doesn't sound anything like a Tally. It has no resemblance of that sound at all. It sounds very soft, very nothing. So it's a pretty guitar, but um, that's about it. So it's here. Can you tell I don't like selling things even though I don't like them? I just like to hoard them, I guess. Maybe I'm a guitar hoarder, but on the other hand, there's worse things than that. And again, Leslie might think there's not worse things than that. Then again, Leslie's a cat hoarder, okay? I'm sorry, okay? You hoard cats, baby. And we love them. Um, yeah, as I said, some ukuleles and, and other things upstairs from Ortega. Uh, and that's it. Is that it? Yeah. So, I don't know how much that is. You might have counted. I don't know. I don't, I really have no idea. Um, and more stuff coming. Because it's always fun to have more guitars. I don't know where to put them. But that shall be a problem that we figure out later. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, maybe tomorrow, whenever Leslie and I will do a video about the amps, which is a much shorter video. And then I want to show you the video gear because that for me is something I deal with every day and that's interesting to some of you to see how we make the videos. We're going to make a video about that. Thanks for watching these seven hours uh, of me. It's your freaking problem because you asked for it. Now, animals at the end, please support my channel, patron, links, everything you need below. And uh, show X as he's staring outside. Just to throw it away And although I have tried There is no way I can find Consolation in this cabinet Oh, oh Is this my life? Oh, oh Is this what I was hoping for? I don't think so There must be more I don't think that that's the case no, I could do better I don't think so